Okay. So here we are. We're painting a little Indian pipe using our black walnut ink. And just to show the difference in tones, I have this most recently made black walnut ink. I never strained it out. It is still a little gritty, but I notice that once it dries, I can just kind of dust off the grittiness. So it's not super hard to use. And this is the ink that was made two years ago. It's a lot, a lot deeper, a lot darker. Um, so it's perfect because then I'll be able to create two tones <clears throat> while painting. And I'm really going to use the white of the paper in this painting. Because Indian pipes are, are white. And I have a, a field guide here. This is what I'm working out of. And it says here... It's an unusual flower that doesn't photosynthesize, but gets nutrients through its roots from humus or decaying matter. It grows alone or in clumps. It is native to Vermont, and it's a whitish, waxy, scaly stalks with nodding waxy bell-like flowers on top. They're really pretty. They're so, so tiny, really, really easy to miss. Um, first time I saw it, I was hiking and I thought it was a mushroom because so I was like kind of it had yeah it was definitely summertime and I think it was the end of summer it was a little it was kind of chilly out and that's mushroom season so um, I was looking for mushrooms and I was like oh I spotted one and I knelt down and it was one of these. And I thought, I was like, oh, maybe this is like another type of mushroom. But apparently not. It's a wildflower. And they flower June to, June to September in shady woods, which is exactly where I found one. And this photo was taken July 30th. So there's that. Let's see, I'm starting off with a lighter tone kind of starting off with some shading and kind of getting like the the parts like this part here is like under the stem so like that would be shaded kind of extends out a little bit too It'd be nice if I could show you the reference photo too but here we are and no I'm not going to bring that all the way down Kind of intersects. It's like during my art classes, I normally play music. So I normally don't have to talk. But just touching like the the top of to figure that out later but yeah here we are looking through like these little shadows here and i don't want to do too much because i really want to just like keep a lot of these parts white and then possibly go around with the darker tone the other ink and make that kind of in the outline. I don't normally work with one color palettes. So this is a really good exercise for me. Kind of learning a little restraint 
and giving time for it to dry and layer it up more. That's a trick, not doing too, too much all at once. Just letting it dry, taking a step back, taking a look. And I may add in another color because here we have like a little these tones here. Maybe you can't see in the photo, but it is kind of reddish. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll break out the watercolors. But for now, we'll just work here. And I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, we're back. I got a little bit distracted. Got on my phone for a second. Check some emails. Ooh, what if I mix the two? All right, we're jumping right back in. So, it's kind of light still over here, so I'm gonna add, it looks like a half oval shape. Bring that right over. I always try to make my paintings very overly detailed. And it's been more of a practice of loosening up for myself lately when it comes to painting and in life. But kind of translate into, you can use that lesson in, in both ways, in life and painting. All right, I might definitely put music over what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Right on this edge. And a little detail. And when you're painting, you know, you can have the creative license to make it a little different than what you see and say whatever your reference photo is. Do you want to make a leaf a little bit higher? Or um, you want to add in some shading that isn't there? You can do it. Just, uh, you want it to to make sense too though. So just keep that in mind. But it's all about playing around, making mistakes. It's nothing too serious. We're not we're not too serious here. Okay, what's this here? Not sure. And 
I'd love this to be a reward for one of my tiers on Patreon. If I really like how it looks, I might turn it into a sticker. So stay tuned for that. Do you have a Patreon now? Camille Josephine. It's patreon.com slash Camille Josephine, C-A-M-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And it's fairly new, but I, uh, I've been working on making videos for the channel. I already have one up about making black walnut ink. Plan to do a few more about natural inks. And whatever else, too. So check it out. Okay. So the tough parts here is there's a section where some of these leaves are almost translucent. And I do want to include them, but just want it to be really, really light. So, in this case, I'm not necessarily I'm just going really, really easy. I'm not trying to do any bold strokes. Hope you can see it. Looks like you can. But it's going really easy. It's just kind of ghost like. Some window there, I know. Ooh, I like how this is turning out. so hard to leave the white parts white, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. It's a challenge. Another one of these little translucent pieces. And bring it out and bring it right back in. The whole thing like is kind of translucent. And so, try my best to keep it that way. Let's see what else. Okay. Use some of this two year old ink darker version. This looks like these lines coming down and it looks like that's about right. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's cute.
Hmm. This looks a little darker in the photo right around here. So, let's see. If you've noticed, I've used one brush throughout this whole painting. Let's see, it's a long round Princeton brush. It's number eight. I really like it. it. Kind of points at the top so you can do fine details. So then you can cover some area with, with paint too because of that round bottom. So this I enjoy. I think I got it. Yeah, I think I got it at Michael's or maybe I got this from the Vermont Art Supply in Burlington. It's a great little shop, independently owned. So I really want the shading to look like shading, but it's a hairy process. Let's see if I can buff out these edges here. Sometimes I like it when the paint dries and there's like a little edge to it. Then it really looks like you painted it. Trying hard to stray away from like something that looks so realistic that it doesn't look like you painted it. Like I want those paint strokes and I want the, or the brush strokes. I want it to look like it was done by hand. And what now? Let's see, add a little more. here. Mm. A little paint bleeding. Oh, we'll see where that goes. Okay, things are getting a little out of control. Reel it back in. looking pretty cute. Oh, I see another ghostly shape. And just as a reminder, I am using a paper towel. I'm like, I'm using it a lot, so. Anytime I dip my paint, my brush into my paint, like I always dab it onto the paper towel to have a little control over what's actually going onto the page. And a lot of times I'll have a little scrap piece of paper next to me while I'm painting. And I'll just kind of do a little little touch to see like what kind of paint I'm actually applying. It really tends to help. And then that little scrap piece of paper you can turn it into a bookmark. It turns out pretty cool after you've like added a bunch of paints to it. You can make it into an art piece. It's fun. Okay, so there's like little notches. See these little notches do and do and do. So I'm gonna try to make those happen. Can you see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a nice little notch. That's a nice little notch that was already there. So, let's see another one. All right. 
So, there's two options. I can use this ballpoint pen. Love it, it has a lot of different colors. I am just gonna do black because I'm going basic. <coughs> or, I could use a little black wash with the tip of this paintbrush and then use my trusty cardboard. <laughs> this thing is awesome because of how much paint has been put on it. Like I really wanna just like cover it in resin and sell it or hang it up. I don't know, it looks so nice. Like look at all that texture. But until then, I'm gonna keep adding to it. I think that's what I'm gonna do, the gouache, because I want it to be like super loose, so I'm gonna use that pen. So let's see if I can keep that in the frame. Okay, dip, dip, dip. And I'm gonna test it. See if I can just, yes I can. Add a little more water because I don't want it to be that dark. Da 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 da. It almost looks like the ink, the black walnut ink. <laughs> oh, that's because there's some, there's some red on the palette, so it's mixing. But honestly, I'm not mad. Bring out my reference again. Do do. Here we go. And let's paint. Uh, 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 looks a little bumpy over here, so we're gonna make it bumpy. That's a little, a little notch. And I love making it look like it just got like chopped up and taken out of the earth. So that's what we're done. Perfect. Um, let's see, bring it up a little more. Um, so I have been watching Euphoria, like everyone else in the world, and it is good. It is inappropriate, um, very explicit, and I just want to I just want to know if there is like a school newspaper that these kids can join, some activities because they need hobbies. You know what I'm saying. And I just remember a lot more supervision when I was younger, but everyone's different, you know? Everybody has a different upbringing. It's just mind-boggling. I just keep saying out loud, where are their parents? But maybe their parents are trying their best. But it is a fictional show, so anyways. Okay, so that looks all right. It really helps it stand out. I'm gonna do the whole thing. Here we go. This is still so wet, so I'm gonna avoid it. And I really like these ghostly pieces. Maybe I'll keep it. I'll just go like this and leave those out so it looks like they're ghostly. Maybe I'll still go over them with something. Maybe like a, a slightly darker hue. And there's that. And this and that, and this and that. And there's a leaf. Oh, it's kind of changing color. Do I like that? I don't know yet. And
thinking back to when I'm, I was in high school now, and I don't want to be a bad influence, but I guess I wasn't in class a whole lot. Spent a lot of time at the mall. Anyways. <laughs> I was in the school newspaper, though. And that was fun. Okay, here we go. I'll kind of attach that. Um, I don't know. You know, don't be fooled. It's like people feel, look like they know what they're doing, but they don't. I'm just winging it every time. I'm just out there, just like, I'm going to paint a picture. And then sometimes it just really looks bad, and then... I store it away, and I'm like, that was a good exercise to make myself feel better. And I never look at it again until whenever. There'll be whole sketchbooks where I'm like, God, that was bad, all of it. So make your mistakes. I'm not saying I'm like the, the best artist, but I bet even Picasso made stuff that he wasn't proud of, but he just kept doing it over and over. He was obsessive, he didn't sleep, you know? I'm not promoting unhealthy sleep habits because I myself need my sleep. But I'm just saying, like, don't beat yourself up. Something doesn't turn out how you want it, just say whatever. Start a new one or start fresh the next day. So let's see. It looks pretty cute. <laughs> and this had a leaf, but I think I covered it with shadows, so it's gone forever. And we're just gonna act like they've never happened. <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere. There's parts that are darker. It's like things are changing color. And I don't know if I am happy with this. So... Add a little more black to it. All right, that's prominent. Let's go. It's like sometimes I'll do one line. I'm like, oh, I hated that. But it's all part of the process. I think we're done. Do I want to add red to this? Just a touch to this? Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. Because I think it's going to look nice.
think it needs to be a little more red. I want it to pop. And like, I'm testing it, see? To the side, always doing that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make it really red so it really pops. Yep. That's it. Why is it called an Indian pipe? These are the questions. These are the questions. Ooh, what if I did the ghostly parts? I just want to add more red now. I'm going to do it. Hmm. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, that's really cute. I'll add a little ghostliness there, maybe a little, a little like that. A little red accent there. You know, we're just riffing now. Here we go. Oh, there's a little red dot there, so I'll just... It's cute! Alright, that about wraps it up. We are not going to do any more because we're going to ruin it. Maybe. All right, so that does it. Uh, I think I am gonna end up making this into a sticker for my patrons on Patreon. Um, if you're interested, feel free to look me up. Uh, it's patreon.com slash Camille Josephine. Uh, I also have a website and I'm planning on putting out more videos like this. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.